My boys learned how to be a mensch by the time they finished fifth grade. And I can honestly say that it was the way Rabbi Raskin taught and what he said to the boys that specifically that made them be a mensch. He used to tell the boys that they need to be responsible for who they are and only they're responsible for who they are. Seven years later, my son is still talking about the impact that Rabbi Raskin had on his life and how what Rabbi Raskin said to him then still resonates in his daily life. Rabbi Farkash announced to the class that in honor of Yud Aleph Nissen, we'd be going to the Rebbe in 770. At that time, I had a pair of shoes that was red and white and stars and it was old Velcro shoes and the Rebbe called me out of the classroom and he privately he asked me do you have another pair of shoes do you have Shabbos shoes and I said no uh, after class he called me over and he had me come with him to his car and uh, he drove me to the shoe store and he bought me a pair of black shoes he paid for it and he dropped me off at home and I came home, my mother asked me, where did you get these shoes? And I was like, very simple, like, my Rebbe bought it for me. And um, my mother sent me the next day back to Cheder with uh, an envelope with money to pay for the shoes. And I remember giving it to Rabbi Farkash and in the hallway, and he, he just looked at me, he folded it up, he put it back in my pocket, he said, bring it home. It was a, it was a gift, it was a present. Now that I'm a teacher, and it's been over 20 years since that story happened, but it um, impacted me in my life to uh, continue to look out for the little details and the little gosh we stick of details of their children's life. I was not progressing together with my friends and classmates the way that I thought I should, and it was frustrating. I was thinking about not returning the following year to our third year of Zal. One day after Mincha, I asked a Rosh, Rabbi Ezra Shachar, Rosh Hashiva, if he had a couple of minutes to talk, and we walked around the block. I told him of my dilemma. The Rosh heard me out, asked me a few questions, and told me that there was another guy in Yeshiva who had similar concerns and was also thinking of not returning the following year. So, the Rosh said he had an idea. If I would agree to return, the following year, for Shir Gimel, he would give the two of us a private class every day. By and large, we met every day. Because I stayed, how could I not? We had negotiated such wonderful terms. On paper, we accomplished much less than our components in the regular Shir Gimel. But what he did for me as a Bachar was huge. He let me know that he believed Bachar should be in Yeshiva, and he worked to make it happen. And just in case someone thinks that he did all this to keep another paying customer in a school, I just want you to know, I was some Balchuva kid from the valley on full scholarship. The Roche paid my way. Rabbi Levin always showed a personal care about each Talmud. It was very strange for us to have a teacher that during recess time, stayed in our class to talk to us and to see how we were doing, to keep us up to par. This personal relationship that we had with him started to make us feel very, very comfortable with him. We were at such a good relationship with him that throughout the summer and throughout the next year that we moved on to, to another teacher, we begged the Anhala of Alatayra that he should be our teacher again for a second year. So in grade eight, he jumped from grade six to grade eight to be our teacher again in grade eight. This teacher, Rabbi Levin, is still in close communication with a lot of boys in our class. A lot of the chavre were all married, Baruch Hashem, with families, but we still are in close communication with him. When we have questions, we go back to him and we ask him, and he always takes the time to answer us and to be a friend of us. Rabbi Yamash. First grade rabbi in Ali Taira. I came over to school one day and I said to him, you know, how's my son doing? And he says to me, your kid calls out in class. As a six-year-old, you know, I can understand that he doesn't want to be, able to be told to be quiet all the time and has to raise his hand. 
But I decided to appeal to his heart, and I said to him, you know, imagine that there's a little boy in your class who's not so smart, and he finally knows the answer to a certain question. He's raising his hand properly and nicely, and then all of a sudden you call out. You ruin his chance of being able to shine. That's not fair, is it? My son thought for a minute and said, Ma, that's a great reason for a different class, but not for mine. In my class, there's none not smart boys. My Rebbe said we're all smart in this class. Thank you, Rabbi Shachar. If our beloved gets to see this, a big yashakayach to you and v'lange and gezun teyarev. I would like to say thank you. And continue to impact every single student you have forever. <laughs>